I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. May, very often, is uh, known as a commencement month, a lot of graduations and uh, commencements of various kinds around, and usually that accomplishes or accompanies a speech of some kind. Sometimes somebody very famous uh, gets to uh, address the uh, graduates. Uh, once again today, and a number of Sundays during this uh, post-resurrection time, uh, we're going to have a listening to Jesus uh, in the upper room on Monday, Thursday evening. And I like to think of this as a commencement address. Uh, the apostles are graduating, basically, to the next phase of their work and their lives. And Jesus, they're graduating. And Jesus is giving them some good advice. And so, last week he talked about the work of the Holy Spirit. This week, he warns them about what's coming as far as their ministry is concerned. And what he says to them applies also to us in our day today. So we will have to listen carefully to what Jesus tells us in his commencement address this morning. We prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Greetings to you this morning. Welcome to our service here at Trinity Lutheran Church. We follow the order of service as it is printed out for you in your worship folder this morning. And we open today with the first hymn listed there. We sing verses 1 through 4.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We love it in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us. And for his sake, grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this Lord unto us all. Amen. O Lord, we announce your word with shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth. Surely, Lord, you have redeemed your servants. All the earth will shout with joy to you, O God. May we will sing to the glory of your name and offer you glory and praise. Praise the Lord! <coughs> O Father, fount of light and creator of all things, O Christ, true God and true man, rising sun, perfection of wisdom, O Lord, spirit, breath of the Father and the Son, purger of sin and giver of grace, we beseech you not to abandon us because of our sins. O consoler of our soul, have mercy upon us. Please be seated. Let us give glory to our God.
O God, we look to you for all we need, and you give us every good thing. May your Holy Spirit teach us to desire and to do what is godly and right. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our Old Testament reading for this Sunday comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29. God is talking to the Jews here about their life in captivity, life in an exile country. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens, and eat their produce. Take wives, become the father of sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, and multiply there, and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For it, its welfare, you will have welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let your prophets who are in the midst of you and your diviners deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams which they dream, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit you and fulfill my good word to you and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. And then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart and I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 67. God be gracious to us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth hath yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us. Our epistle comes from St. John's Revelation, chapter 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each of the gates was a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of the Lord has illuminated it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glories into it. In the daytime, for there will be no night there, its gates will never be closed. And they will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and nothing unclean, and no one who practices abomination and lying shall ever come into it, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. This too is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ who has purchased us with his blood has arisen and has appeared to us. Hallelujah. Now he is leaving the world and going back to the Father. Hallelujah. We rise in honor of Christ's gospel. 
Our gospel today comes from John chapter 16, verse 23. In that day, you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be made full. These things I have spoken to you in figurative language. An hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but will tell you plainly of the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, And I do not say to you that I will request of the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me. And have believed that I came forth from the Father. I have come from the Father and have come into the world. I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. His disciples said, Lo, now you are speaking plainly and are not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
Grace, peace, mercy, and truth be multiplied unto you through Jesus Christ, your risen Lord and Savior. Amen. God's word upon which we base our brief meditation this morning is given to us in the gospel reading, once again coming from John chapter 16, looking especially at these verses. Jesus says, Behold, an hour is coming, and has already come, for you to be scattered, each one to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts now be acceptable in your sight, your strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Dear Christian friends and believers in the risen Lord and His rule over the world, you ever have that feeling, that I uh, guess you could call it top of the world feeling? Oh, everything is going great. Everything is like uh, on a downhill pull, you might say. Hmm? Maybe, maybe not so much. Hmm? I think as believers, as Christians, I would say that in the last decade or so, we may feel just the opposite. We may feel like we're in the bottom of a deep, deep hole. A hole that's getting deeper all the time, even though we're not doing the digging. Today, in our gospel reading, Jesus would seem to be at the bottom of a hole. He would seem to be, he would look to be uh, depressed. He would look to be at the bottom. He would look to be looking at his death, the crucifixion on a cross, a terrible humiliation. He would be looking at the apostles scattered to the winds and, and uh, afraid, terrible fear gripping them. He would see ahead of him danger for all his believers, including you and I here today. And yet, and yet, even in the face of all that disaster, Jesus has comforting words. Jesus has words of triumph. He sounds like a conquering king. He sounds like a, like a great victor on a battlefield. He tells us, yes, you believers will be scattered. You're going to have all kinds of problems and troubles, but most importantly, you will have my peace. You will be reconciled to God. And that covers a multitude of sins. Now again, this is Jesus' speech, his sermon, if you will, his final sermon, in a way, to his apostles. As I said, this is their graduation day. This Last Supper here, this is the day of their commencement. They are moving on. They are done with their three years of study under Jesus. They are finished with their book learning, you might say. And they are ready to go out into the world and proclaim the gospel and win souls through the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus, at the conclusion of this sermon, does what a lot of speech givers do at graduation. They don't just talk about all the good things that might be happening. They also talk about some of the bad things. They also talk about the challenges. They also talk about the problems and troubles that the graduates might have going forward in the world. Now, I want to point out something from the text that... Um, you may not see in a lot of translations. As a matter of fact, I didn't see them in, in one of the ones I looked at. Uh, verse 31, the, 30, the verse before I started reading, it says, Jesus answered them, and in the most of translations it says, Do you now believe? That is totally wrong. That's not what the Greek says. 
It's not Jesus saying, gee, wow, you guys believe yet or what? No, what it is is an exclamation point. In other words, he gets to the end and they're talking, hey, well, now we know you come from God. And Jesus responds saying, wow, you do now believe, exclamation point. So when you get home, take your reading Bible and take your little trusty pen out and find that verse and take away the ex uh, question mark and put a nice big exclamation mark there. That's what it really means, all right? At the same time that Jesus knows that they're believers, he also knows that their strength is limited. Their faith is, shall we say, somewhat tenuous. I mean, it, uh, it, it needs a little stiffening, right? That, that's really what it needs. And so he foretells the apostles' abandonment. He says, I know you're going to run away from me. And he doesn't mean just that. He says, I know you're going to run away from a lot of things. Jesus knows that they will try to hide, not just from the Romans, not just from the Jews, that they will also try to hide from him. They will also try to hide from God. This is what we believers do sometimes, okay? When our faith is tested, when our, when our faith is challenged, when things happen to us that, that just, just really press us to the core, hmm? that, that just really just rip at our hold on faith, saving faith, the scattering that he's talking about is not just going to happen to the apostles. It's going to happen to you and me. It has happened to you and me. And it will continue to happen to you and me. Let me explain. Some of the apostles and some of us will be chased away from home, family, and church. Hmm? I guess I would especially say church. The beliefs of our youth by worldly opposition. The world does not like what we believe, folks. And I'm not just talking here about the Trinity. I'm not just talking about redemption or universal atonement. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the whole gamut. I'm talking about everything from evolution to abortion and everything in between. They don't like it. They don't want to hear it. And they don't want us to believe it because they're threatened by it. Maybe their poor little puny liberties might somehow be impinged. Oh no, we can't have that. We can't actually give in to the will of God. Heaven forbid, if they even believe in heaven, right? Some, including us, will be chased away from Jesus will be chased away from Jesus by fear. By fear of him because sometimes he is described to us by false teachers in a very scary way. Sometimes he is proclaimed to us like an avenging judge. You know, you hear them fire and brimstone types, right? All right Jesus is going to come back and wipe the slate clean. Jesus is going to come back and kick your butt. Jesus is going to come back and put the world to flame. Jesus is going to come back and get you. All right? No, Jesus is going to come back and then escort us to heaven. Hello? That's what's going to happen. But sometimes that fear causes us to stand back from Jesus, causes us to not pray. Huh? When we have those bad things happening to us, when we have that broken leg, when we have that cancer spot on our lungs, when we have the various ailments and illments that come from age even, okay? We sometimes get to the point, why do I want to bother God with that? Jesus is not interested in that. Jesus doesn't care about me. Obviously, look what he did to me. And we forget. Out of that fear, we forget that all things work to good that love God. And our questionings, huh? We question God. God, why did you allow this? God, why did you allow that? Jesus, you're running the world. Why that hurricane? Why that tornado? Why that disease? Why that, uh, you, you know, fill in the blank, right? Uh, all around the line. And so that fear and questioning cause us to run away, to be scattered. 
from the Lord, and also all will be chased away from God through sin. Some of our sin is willful. We know we're not supposed to lust, but we lust anyway. We know we're not supposed to worry about tomorrow, but we worry anyway. We know we are not supposed to love money or property or anything else above God, and yet we do. Right? I mean, go through, sit there for a second, folks, and go through all those Ten Commandments. Huh? You innocent of any of them? I know I'm not. All right? And so through willful sin, and sometimes through ignorant sin, sometimes we don't really even know, as David said, my secret faults, right? We don't even know that we're going against God's will. And so we run away, we run away, we run away. And we don't always confess to God, hey, God, I've been wrong. I've done things wrong here, Lord. Come back to me. Don't worry about Jesus, folks. He makes it very clear here. He's never alone. He's always with God, and he's always with us. If Jesus is always with God, and God is everywhere, God is omnipresent, okay, God always beholds the face of the angels wherever the angels are, which means that God is everywhere, then God is with us. God is with us in that hospital bed. God is with us on the highway. God is keeping the little peepers open, right, so that we can see those little white lines, huh? God is with us when we are sick and when we are well and when we are fearful and when we are courageous. God is there every time. He wants the apostles to understand. I get it, you guys. I know you're going to run away and I know why you're going to run away. I understand that and I'm not going to hold it against you. All right? When you come back, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to bring you back as my apostles and then send you out to the whole world. You know why? Because he says here, because. He says, I give you peace. Notice, I give you peace. In me, you have peace. You see, in Christ, because Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Believers and unbelievers both. Okay? Everybody. There's nobody left out. Not the worst sinner you can think of in all history or the worst sinner you can think of in your neighborhood, whichever that happens to be, okay? Jesus has died for those sins. Those sins are paid off. They are atoned for. They are redeemed completely and totally. So whenever you think sometimes, I have done something so bad, God can't possibly forgive me, he's forgiven Hitler, okay? He's paid for his sins. He's paid for the Ayatollah's sins. He's paid for Muhammad's sins. He's paid for Buddha's sins. He's paid for everybody else's sins. He's paid for totally. Okay, absolutely. Nothing left. The Lamb of God does indeed take away the sin of the world. Huh? Yeah. Right? So if you don't think you're sometimes forgiven, just remember, <laughs> you're in the world. Hello? You can just do this, right? Okay, I'm here. That means I'm included in that. That's how we have peace. Now, of course, the people don't believe that. They don't have peace. Because they don't believe it. All right? Okay? So, they, even though their sins are paid for, they don't think they're forgiven. And so, as far as they're concerned, they're not forgiven. That's the problem with them, see? It, it, the problem is not the sin. The problem is the rejection of the gospel. We are reconciled to God, folks. And therefore, we have peace with God in Christ. Now, it goes on and finally kind of says, now, now, even though you've got this peace, you're going to have trouble. And, and you're going to have plenty of trouble from the world <clears throat> because the world's got all these false gods out there. The world's got all this false religion out there, and they don't like to be messed with. Mm, ooh, they don't like to be messed with. They like the religion of legalism. They like the religion of Phariseeism. They like the religion, you know, of, of Saul, the church persecutor, the not murdered Christians. That's the kind of religion they like. Okay? People like the religions of works. Only nowadays, I like to call it the religion of woke, because that's exactly what it is. Trouble from the world. But, notice the last words he says. But, take courage. Be of courage because I have overcome the world. The devil is already defeated. Satan is defeated. His demons are defeated. 
The unbelievers are defeated. The false prophets are defeated. The false churches are defeated. The false preachers are defeated. The crazy guys are defeated out there in the world who deny all the truths of Scripture. They're all defeated, every one of them. We are the victors. Huh? That is what Jesus tells these apostles. Now, they're going to run away anyway. You know that. You know how the story goes. But they're going to come back. Why do they come back? Why do they come back in that upper room on resurrection evening? I'll tell you why. Because they got nowhere else to go. Hmm? They know this is the only place to be, and they've got to figure out how to go forward. Jesus, of course, appears to them and gives them their marching orders. My dear Christian friends, those of you who uh, maybe like movies may uh, remember two very famous scenes in moviedom, in cinema, where a person declared themselves on top. Huh? You might remember in uh, White Heat, James Cagney standing on those, those uh, gas uh, things and, and saying, you know, top of the world, ma! Top of the world! Right? As he blew up. Eh? You younger ones, you remember, right? Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Right? On the bow of the Titanic. King of the world! I'm king of the world! Well, stop and think what happened to those people. What happened to that Cagney character? He died. He blew himself up, died, got killed. What happened to the Caprio character? He drowned. Froze to death, right? Let go of the raft there, drowned, sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Okay? Both of those claims, folks, were false. Yeah. But you and I, okay? you and I can say that. You and I can roll down your windows today on the way home and yell out, King of the world! Top of the world, ma! Because it'll be true. Because in Christ, you are top of the world, huh? In Christ, you are the victor. In Christ, you have peace with God forever. Amen. Now the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in true faith. Through Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. may be seated for prayer. <clears throat> oh, most gracious Lord, we praise you for all your tender mercies, and especially for the revelation of your most holy will. Forgive our many sins and implant your saving word in us so that we may believe it and bring forth the fruits of faith. Rule over your church and all its ministers and congregations so that all the pure doctrines of Scripture are preserved, faith strengthened, love increased, and your kingdom extended. Grant health and courage to all who govern, and especially all those entrusted to protect our nation. Maintain tranquility and righteousness in our land and hinder and punish all wickedness so that we might lead a calm and quiet life. Comfort all who are in trouble and want, sickness, anguish, peril, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering for the gospel. Through your Holy Spirit, teach each of us to acknowledge all our afflictions 
as the loving manifestation of your good and fatherly will. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, who by your Son has promised to give us whatever we ask in his name, we ask you grant us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may make known all our requests unto you in faithful prayer and desire only that which is well-pleasing to you and eternally good for us, lifting up our holy hands without wrath or doubting and being firmly assured that you will hear and answer our prayers. Grant these and whatever other things you would have us ask you, O God, only for the sake of our redemption, won for us by Jesus Christ, your one and only Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And in whose name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The remembrance of Christ is not the vain celebration of a show or the celebration for the sake of example, the way plays celebrate the memory of Hercules or Ulysses. It is rather the remembrance of Christ's blessings and the acceptance of them by faith so that they make us alive. The principal use of the sacrament is to make clear that terrified consciences are the ones worthy of it. And how? They ought to use it. Congregation, we now come forward for the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> this is the body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given up unto death even the death of the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins take and eat this is the true body of your Lord given for you this is the blood of Christ shed on the cross for your sins Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the blood of your Lord shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins.
take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto sin, death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of your Lord given for you. This is the blood of your Savior shed for you on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given up unto death, even the death of the cross, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Please join in singing the Nunc Dimittis. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this his sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule in our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we might be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace.
Please join in the closing hymn. Please be seated. A very good morning to everyone, and especially a very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers we have with us here. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Um, this week, uh, pretty much a uh, regular schedule, I guess we could say, uh, Bible class on Tuesday, as usual, at 10 a.m., and uh, no Bible basics on Saturday, because it's not that Saturday, okay? Uh, and then um, regular schedule again next Sunday. So thank you very much, and uh, good morning again.